Hi guys, good morning. Friday the 30th of August. It's gone uh, 8am here in London. We'll have a quick look over some of the uh, headlines from uh, overnight into uh, the morning session. We'll have a look over the charts as well. Of course, it's the last trading day of the month. And it's also the last uh, day of, our, of one of our summer intern groups. Uh, and they've got a trading competition all day. So we'll uh, strive to uh, make the most of uh, the briefing, focusing on, on how to really prepare for this day. So we'll spend a bit of time on the calendar uh, as well, as we do have a, a fair bit of data out today. And, and just having a, a quick look over at the charts before we go through some of these, these headlines, you'll notice the euro uh, dollar is, is just on its low of the day. And if we did put this, this chart back longer term, or well, on an hourly, but just drifting it to uh, the, the low of the month there, you can see we've now just made a new low for the year for the euro dollar so if we just put this on the daily chart that it is now and remove everything you can see we're and i'm just going to draw a horizontal line here we're now the lowest we've been since may 2017 so one of the articles we'll, we'll focus on is uh, just uh, some hawkish shots fired at dragging well listen the the market here is is on the low of the year you can tell already how we're you know, taking in these, these headlines, uh, I guess. And if we have a, a quick look back at that daily chart where, just before we go through the charts technically later, where we could really be looking to go to, we've got quite a key point just below where we're trading, which was uh, the higher level uh, from uh, just before that big push up that we saw back in May last, uh, in 2017. So 4th of May, 110.33. Uh, would be a, a key level of support if that was to go today, which isn't out of the question. Uh, I don't really see much stopping it for, for quite some time. Of course, comments can come out, and it wasn't too long ago. Uh, if we look at last Friday, that we had such a big push higher, and I remember, you know, when this was was coming out, it was actually relatively, you know, late in the day, three o'clock. Jackson Hole speech. Okay, it's a bit of a nothing. Uh, up and down exactly where we were a bit of a doji then Trump comes out and his big uh, big Twitter war speech war and, and the, the dollar weakened massively uh, against the euro on, on the trade fears igniting China weakening and, and obviously the, the euro following suit uh, well strengthening to, to the upside there as the dollar weakened and um, I've, I've been long well, along the dollar short euro dollar for, for a while so seeing that was, was quite frustrating and it was a long walk home uh, thinking about what has Trump done to me here. I've given him nothing but praise over the last few years and he's, and he's come out with one of these, these days where all he says is, is negative uh, for the dollar. But the market at the moment, every time we even try to get higher in this euro, it's just met with a, a push down. You can see every single time and even going back to that, that daily uh, chart here, you can see just how any moment even going back to january push higher and it's that's that breakthrough uh, and this market despite what trump wants is, is is pushing lower and of course over well within a couple of, of weeks three weeks or so we do have uh, the central bank meetings coming together uh, again ecb this time are first so um uh, obviously we've got that that coming up and and the fed and, and bank of england uh, as well on the 18th and 19th uh, of, of September. So it's going to be certainly interesting as we've now wrapped up August from the end of today. September's coming, the volume, I uh, suppose we can look to start coming back into the market and people are going to have to start pricing in uh, new events ahead of these uh, these central bank meetings. And the Hawks are trying to step it up from the, from the ECB, but to, to no avail as of yet. And you can see as well just this morning uh, the DAX over the last well few minutes or so just pushing to a new high uh, well here we go since well pretty much the yeah the 5th of August there so that's pushing higher is a bit of a resistance point and of course we're 10 minutes into that open where the volume is going to start picking up anyway but that doesn't look like a hawkish ECB uh, does it despite what some of the comments have been yesterday and even this morning uh, as well S&P you can see this this really really key level being tested late last night uh, obviously there's no pivots on here but you can just see the importance of this whole area uh, whether we can get above there this week will be absolutely massive for the month as well 29.43 the, the, the top end 29.44 the top end of, of that range and then even where we just sort of reached overnight 
in the Asian session 34. So if we can clear that, uh, they'll be pretty, pretty important uh, for the S&P. And what's been a, a pretty good uh, last last week, really, since Friday, yes, uh, last last week, where obviously stocks came down pretty strong and uh, Trump eased off the pedal. Maybe he saw the reaction to you know, his favoured S&P and thought, well, hang on a minute, I need to just calm this down. We don't want a repeat of uh, last, uh, well, quarter four last year, and we've drifted higher. And that, is, in turn, has, has helped oil uh, as well. The, the easing of the, of the trade war fears has, has helped as oil is set for its uh, biggest weekly gain since July. So if we just put the, the oil chart going on from that week and of course with the trade fears that we had last Friday if I just rectangle that now you can see we came lower so if the off the the trade fears there now easing a touch obviously oil has to repair some of that so that's one of the reasons uh, that we have uh, pushed to the upside and then of course on Tuesday evening uh, as you can see highlighted here now we had the API that was confirmed on Wednesday with the DOE as a, a big draw, one of the, the biggest since December last year. That's another reason why oil has also pushed higher. And also uh, there's a, a hurricane looming in, in Florida. Uh, and this has been priced into the markets. Of course, the week isn't over yet. And just looking at this from technical point of view, you can see this trend line that was already <coughs> marked up. I imagine this is from uh, the session yesterday, let's just put that on exactly the highs. This looks pretty key going forward from yesterday. You can see you've got those free tests now. Uh, so again, going into the week and the month would be massively important to see whether we can get above there. And then this is that trend line on a longer term <clears throat> coming in around 57.50, something that I would focus on. So Hurricane, uh, what they named it this time... Let me scroll down. Hurricane Dorian heading towards uh, Florida raised fears uh, of the offshore U.S. crew producers may shutter output if the storm passes into the Gulf of Mexico over the weekend. So I know oil traders will be keeping a close eye on that. And it's just another reason why we are looking like we're going to have one of the best weeks uh, for oil since July. So uh, a few weeks there helped by hurricane fears, trade easing and, of course, the draws that we saw uh, in the weekly inventories for API Tuesday and DOE on the Wednesday uh, as well. Having a look elsewhere, just in the, in the markets now, the stocks just trying to continue this this push higher. Also with the, the pound as well, you can see on the fact that the dollar is slightly stronger today, we are just drifting lower here as well. So the euro, as mentioned, making that new low for the year. The pound, thanks to uh, some comments from uh, Merkel last week is still relatively elevated. It hasn't actually retraced all of that move yet. Um, if we were to make a new low for the week, however, you'd imagine that would come pretty quickly. You can see we're trading on the futures anyway, 121.77, so a fair whack away from the low of the year that we had at 123.34. Uh, of course, that 120 level is still very much uh, uh, a level of interest. Stories from overnight, what's feeding into... Uh, the market, I think I didn't have the chart up there, so let me just go through that again for the for the pound. You can see trading 121.77, so there's those Merkel uh, comments. There's the suspension of parliament, uh, and we pretty much reversed almost to, to the tick here, those Merkel rumours coming through. So some important levels for the pound still, obviously, to have marked up. A um, couple of uh, headlines overnight, U UK and EU to step up Brexit talks as Parliament showdown looms. So uh, I was speaking to, to Ant just before uh, the briefing uh, about this and you know, and certainly on, on Twitter, it, I mean, it, it depends what your agenda is, but there's certainly these people on, on one side of things that are very uh, critical of Boris Johnson and what he's doing to their beloved Great Britain. Uh, but there's also people that are saying, well, we're finally getting someone that's actually you know, sticking to what they're saying and not beating around the bush and, you know, sticking to their cunning plan, if you like. And Boris Johnson has got this set up here. So over, uh, well, the next month, Boris Johnson has, uh, has ordered officials that have said they will meet at least eight times throughout September in order to start a new deal, come to some sort of, uh, of an agreement. Uh, and this is to almost help the, you know, ward off the rebellion against that no deal divorce. So at least he's trying 
or this is the way it looks anyway, to get some sort of deal, to avoid that no deal, but at the same time saying, well, if we can't, if Europe aren't going to play ball, well, fine, we'll leave with that no deal uh, as well. So it'd be interesting to see uh, how that how that sort of develops, certainly over uh, the coming days uh, as well. And for the interns, obviously, trading the pound, uh, if we just have a look over the last couple of weeks, you've had comments coming out uh, which have been pretty unscheduled. So that's a market where certainly today I'm just going to be in a, a bit more of an edge and I'm only going to treat it as if I'm trading the pound. So we have got some dollar related things out. So therefore euro, yen or Aussie against the dollar is where I would focus there uh, for the currencies rather than the pound as treating it as almost a reaction to a news headline that you might happen to be at your, your desk for. Also headlines uh, from yesterday that have drifted in or worth keeping an eye on, shall we say, is... is uh, is uh, the, the speaker, Burko, about how he's going to try to stop this uh, suspension of, of, of the parliament. Uh, he's going to hold a, a vote next week to, to well, to try and uh, get a, a, an extension of, of Article 50 again. And uh, whether that would happen or not may well help um, the Remain side of, of things. Uh, so that's, I think, expected to potentially take place next Tuesday or Thursday, uh, I do believe. I'll, I'll post the article uh, in the chat uh, later on. Um, with the Conservative side of uh, the thing, or Boris's his camp now, I guess you could say, uh, uh, especially ahead of uh, the sort of the next sort of parliamentary votes is, of course, you know, this, this recess happens every year between September and October. So it's actually nothing new. Yes, I know there's more at stake here. Uh, but you didn't really hear people talking too much about that. And there hasn't been a Queen's speech for, for quite some time as well. So on the, uh, the other side of things, it's kind of business as, as usual. This happens every year. But yes, of course, I do understand that uh, there is bigger things at play for now. But also, Burko has, has been uh, at the helm for over two, two stints already, which is uh, the, uh, the sort of the status quo. So it wouldn't surprise me to see a uh, pick up in trying to almost out him from his seat. Uh, so I'll be keeping a, a watch on that, certainly as we do go into uh, the end of September and October, whether he still even has a role. And of course, he's been very, very vocal over the last few months of trying to stop um, this uh, this no deal and, and Brexit from, from even happening, uh, even though not too long ago he was a, a Eurosceptic, but that's for a, another day, perhaps. I don't want to get uh, too political. Uh, but certainly over the weekend, we, we want to see how this story plays out. You know, are there still going to be uh, a rebellion against Boris? That no confidence vote seems to almost just drifting away as maybe this plan for the Article 50 extension from Burko, uh, holding that vote next week, is, is now at the forefront of, uh, of people's minds. Uh, Data-wise as well, we'll come on to uh, in a moment. Um, but also, speaking of the weekend, we're keeping an eye on, on what... Uh, what's happening in, in Germany. You've got uh, uh, the elections that finally, well, these might be the elections that finally lead to Merkel's fall. Uh, the headline there perhaps insinuating too much uh, in, in the way that that would be a, a development that I don't think is, is on the cards for, for now. Uh, the, the far right AFD poised for major gains in coalition run states. However, uh, the, the article goes on, and, and this is really general consensus, that even if the AFD becomes the, the strongest force uh, in these elections, um, it is unlikely to be able to govern as no other party is willing to form a coalition with it. So as has been the case really over the last couple of years, uh, where within Europe you've had this build up of oh, far, the far right are gonna you know, have massive gains in these elections, blah, 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 and it can then lead to this, that, and the other. Uh, that's not really uh, been the case, and it's almost some have won, some haven't. Um, so for me, a bit of a, a non-story for sure worth keeping an eye on. Uh, and again, if it fits your agenda of uh, the, the euro, uh, another sort of nail in its coffin, then fine. Uh, but for me, the euro, uh, obviously, even with these hawkish comments, and it just seems destined that we are going to keep pushing lower as money just pouring into the dollar. What other currency really at the moment uh, would you want to, to be holding, especially if we are going into that recession? I can argue, obviously, the yen and the franc, but certainly against the euro, the dollar looks like it is going to, to strengthen. And as mentioned on that daily chart, now we're at the lowest we've been since 2017. I mean, you can just see 
here, let me just make this a bit clearer. You can just see the direction of this market just trending down. Every time we even look to push higher, uh, you can see the, the extent of that, that move to, to the downside there. So, uh, yeah, not looking too good for, for the euro. Quick look over the, the calendar uh, as well. I'll just transition this. As mentioned, we do have a, a fair bit of data out. And speaking of the euro, it'll be worth keeping an eye, of course, what happens uh, throughout the, the day as well. We do have some inflation data around 10 o'clock. Uh, and the, the most recent uh, reading of that wasn't too good at all. And you can see 1% uh, was the July number. And it's been on a, a decline from a year ago where we were up at 2%. So not looking too good there the the range uh, to keep an eye on there uh, still you know not you know even if it was to to get that top end it doesn't look too rosy but 0 0.9 the low end 1.2 uh, the top end of that year on year uh, figure uh, and for the excluding food and energy 1.1 uh, 1 .1 is the expected figure so to stay in line for both of those readings is the expectation uh, at the moment if we were to get a, a worse than expected reading you can see here, just put in uh, trading economics, the, the chart onto that five year, that would be the worst, well, going back to late 2016. Uh, and a bad reading is just going to uh, ignite the flame even further that come September, there's going to be that rate cut that they kind of were in wait and see mode uh, at the last meeting or wait to see what the Fed did almost at the last meeting. So we're looking like there's going to be uh, a rate cut and then how big is this QE package going to be? Of course, the Hawks over the last couple of days have, have been saying we don't need it as of yet. Um, but uh, just some of those Hawks that have come out and, and said these things are not uh, Weidman uh, and Lautenschlager. So just to bring up the, the Dove Hawk cheat sheet, which uh, you can obviously find on ITC Markets. I'm sure we've gone through this before. We can see not Weidman uh, and Lautenschlager free of the most hawkish. So what you would expect. And then on the flip side, you've had Ren over the last couple of days uh, saying they need this QE package. So as expected, there hasn't really been a surprise uh, in the ECB Hawk Dub camp uh, to suggest uh, you know, that we aren't going to maybe have this package in, in September. Uh, but you know, development certainly into, the, into those meetings will, will be key um, and obviously worth keeping an eye on. Back to the, the calendar as we go through the morning. Obviously, the, the key event Euro-wise is going to be uh, that data at 10 o'clock. You've also got the unemployment figure as well, expected to stay in line at 7.5%. Uh, then probably a bit of a lull, probably a bit of a lull as we go into to lunchtime. So certainly from a, a trading point of view, you'd be probably looking to exit the most part of those positions by midday. and then let the market readjust, maybe almost take everything off the, the chart and uh, reevaluate the positions. We've got to think about it is the last day of the month. So you can have that crazy month then trading where uh, you get erratic price behavior, uh, but certainly worth looking at really key levels on your longer term chart. So for example, if I was trading oil, I need to be thinking, well, hang on, if we finish the week above this trend line, it's key and it's bullish so above that trend line you might well get a push but also the longer term one uh, as well which you can see here if I put it on that daily chart if we can get anywhere near today 57 54 massively important and a break above there you may well see a quick run through especially the way oil uh, and gold of course can move on a Friday so that would be the time where I just want to uh, around midday just have a look at the charts as we only have a, a session or so left of the week uh, to identify where are the re these really key areas. Then heading back uh, into the afternoon or heading into the afternoon I should say, uh, we got some uh, inflationary numbers out of uh, the US and we got some Canadian GDP data uh, from quarter two so it's a bit, um, you know, the Canadian data is always a, uh, an interesting one to trade. So for the interns, you know, you might be in a sticky position by then, uh, but just uh, be careful as, uh, as we know how quickly that can, can spike to always come back again. So just wait for the retracement would be my advice on that. Inflationary numbers uh, out of the, the US uh, will be worth keeping an eye on those core PCE uh, index from July. 1.6 expected for that year on year. Personal income 0.3. 
uh, as well. And then Chicago PMI, uh, got the chart up here. You can see it's been on a steady decline over the last three readings of this, below 50 now as well. So it's fallen into contraction for the last two. That expected figure still below 47.5. It would have to beat the top end of that range for um, some, I would say, consistent dollar strength. And then obviously that would be uh, above 50 for the first time since May. So you may well see a further run through for, for the dollar uh, if that number is to be good. Uh, and that really wraps up the, the afternoon. So 1.30 to, to 3 o'clock is going to be pretty key data-wise. And it's not as necessarily a case of you're going to want to be holding positions for maybe a long time. Uh, just a quick note that DAX is pushing above that resistance level. If that's going to confirm a break above then it's always worth keeping an eye on the <coughs> half hourly close. So in four minutes you've got the uh, 8.30 close. So a break above there and you can imagine stocks are going to have another go at pushing to this really key resistance. I can't stress how important I think this whole level is uh, for, the, for the week and month and uh, well for the rest of uh, well for the next few weeks anyway. Uh, going back to that calendar, that wraps it up then. Uh, no uh, real speakers of note. However, we have had some unscheduled releases for sure over the last few days and weeks. And you've got to imagine Trump is going to be tweeting uh, and he does not want that dollar as strong as it is. So just be careful about holding positions over the weekend as well, uh, I would say. Any questions, as usual, uh, please uh, do let us know. Obviously, be on the mic throughout the day. Um, and uh, to the interns, good luck uh, ahead of your, your trading competition.